why Joe Rogan and Michael J. White suck each other's peepees when it comes to kicking and fighting. I have all the answers in this video, guys. Make sure you stick to, to the end of the video to find out everything about this because after you watch this full video, you will have a higher IQ about Michael J. White, about Joe Rogan, about kicking in general, fighting, levels, and everything else. I will demonstrate Michael J. White's level, I will demonstrate Joe Rogan's level, and I will show you guys a real master level. I will show you guys that there's levels to this. And I will expose why they're lying and why they're sucking each other's peepees, okay? So make sure you stick to the end of the video for that. I will give you guys also an extra, extra bonus at the end. I will give you guys my opinion about Michael J. White's story about breaking a heavy back chain, okay? And I will compare that story to one of the worst knockouts in the history of Holland Gym Wars. So make sure you guys stick to the end of the video, because at the end of the video, I will also link my knockouts, four of them. I will link them at the end of the video, and I will start the video by asking you guys this question. Have you guys seen Joe Rogan or Michael J. White be able to do a full split like I'm doing right now? No. Have you guys seen Michael J. White or Joe Rogan ever spar full contact in kickboxing like the way we spar here in Holland? No. Or the way Sean Strickland spars at that level? No. Have you ever guys seen Joe Rogan and Michael J. White ever, 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 ever fight in MMA, in kickboxing, or anything like this, or any street fights? No. Have you ever guys seen, ever, ever, ever seen Michael J. White or Joe Rogan ever knock someone out with a high kick? In anything? The answer is no, okay? I have all of these things. So you guys take the end of the video to watch those four videos. I will link them at the end so you guys can watch each and every one. One of them is a knockout on an MMA fight in Mexico with a high kick. The other one is me knocking out a really tall kickboxer with a liver shot. The other one is me knocking out another tall kickboxer with a liver shot in the ring. And the fourth one is me knocking a Dutch guy out cold with a wheel kick during hard sparring. Okay, so stick to the end of the video to watch these four videos because I prove what I say. I don't just talk, guys, okay? Now, moving on to the exposing. Why does Joe Rogan and Michael J. White suck each other's pee, -pee? Even though you've never seen Michael J. White in Joe Rogan's podcast, here's the number one reason why. Because they're friends. They are really, really, really good friends. Okay, so this doesn't mean necessarily that what they're saying is true. Michael J. White is uh, being up talked by Joe Rogan and, and, and Joe Rogan is up talking Michael J. White. They're both lifting each other up because you know, Americans don't ever want to seem like they're cocky even though they all are. Most of you famous Americans, you rather have other people brag about you, right? That, that's, so this is what they're doing here. They're both bragging about each other so they don't need to brag about themselves as much later, okay? Michael J. White, uh, unfortunately for you, Joe Rogan made a video, I will link it up here, you guys can watch that one, where he talks about how he hyped up Ronda Rousey. Well, he's hyping up Michael J. White the same way that he hyped up Ronda Rousey, okay? And Michael J. White is doing the same favor in return for Joe Rogan, okay? What has Michael J. White said? Well, Michael J. White said that Joe Rogan has the best spinning back kick. Like, period, okay? That's BS, all right? Like he's not even at like real master level with his spinning back kicks. Maybe, maybe but the black belt level, but not like there's a lot of first degree black belts that kick better than Joe Rogan's spinning back kick. All right. And then Joe Rogan, on the other hand, said that Michael J. White kicks perfect. Also BS. Michael J. White's kicks are not perfect. And I'm going to show you guys exactly why right now. Okay. I'm going to show you guys exactly why. Okay. First of all, they can't do splits, neither one of them, all right? Michael J. White cannot kick uh, at a, even at his head level, okay? You guys might think, but I've seen him kick above his head level. No, you haven't. Go back and watch his movies. He's got a trick. He's got a trick. When he fights people, they're always shorter than him, okay? If you watch that video, he's talking about outer range, in range. He talks about doing a spin kick, and he does a spin kick this high. You guys can watch it. He does this outer range, and then he goes in range. And he does a spinning a side kick instead of a spinning kick. Because he calls it a spinning kick. But that's not a spinning kick, okay? A spinning kick, a real spinning kick to your own head level. This is my own head level, it's right here. Bata! And higher would look like this. Pow! That's a real high spinning kick. Okay, Michael J. White cannot do that. What does he do instead? He gets to fight people all the time in his movies that are shorter than him. 
You guys watch Van Damme, how he always fights people that are taller? It's because Van Damme can kick high like me. Michael J. White can't. Neither can Joe Rogan. So, in a sense, Van Damme also kicks better than both of them. Now that's said, what does he do? He gets people that are like this much shorter, okay? Then he gets them to bend down. Now watch, watch one thing. You guys see the height of the kick here? I'm gonna kick at the same height I'm kicking here, but I'm gonna kick towards the camera, which is placed a little bit below. I did this on purpose. Watch how high my kick looks. Bah! It's not higher than a minute ago. Bah! It's really not. So if I'm kicking at this height, and the guy is standing here, Ducking down like this, of course the kick is going to look like I'm kicking above my head. It doesn't make it true, okay? This is why when you guys see Michael J. White hitting the back, he never really throws high kicks. He's always doing middle kicks. He's kicking here, looking at the camera. He thinks I'm looking at the camera while he kicks. Somehow it's going to make him look more like an expert. It's stupid because you should be looking where you're kicking. But a real expert can do that. I can lift my leg up like this, bro, and still look at the camera if I want, see? This is real expert shit. This shit Michael J. White does here is not impressive. If you're impressed by that, you're stupid. Now, moving on to uh, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is a spinning back kick. It's the same thing. It's not a spinning back kick, it's a spinning side kick. A back kick goes down from here, like this. Bah! I will link at the end how I knock people out with this kick. I have videos knocking Dutch King Boxers out with this kick, with liver shots. Joe Rogan has none of that. There's not one video of Joe Rogan kicking anyone with that kick. The way he kicks too is like a pushing kick. And then he leaves it out there like this. Like he leaves it out. That's the equivalent of throwing a cross and standing like this. All right, why? If you kick like that, the kick will come like this, right? What you guys want to do is kick right here below the rib cage. Just like a hook to the liver. Now, how do you do that? How do you, how do you get your foot here? Well, you may guess it just like the liver shot. You're here, bum, right? You come back, you drop your hand and you come here, right? It looks like an L, you guys see the L? Watch my leg now. It's the same thing, it looks like an L. This is how you guys wanna come and just touch. You don't have to kick hard, you just touch the person. Just like this, bop, that's enough to put a guy down if you do it right with the right timing. I prove it at the end of the video, you guys can watch that, okay? So, my kicks are not only better than Michael J. White, they're not only better than Joe Rogan, they're better than both of them combined, okay? Both of them combined, if you guys watch Joe Rogan kick high, his, his high kicks are slow. He telegraphs, they're slow, they're, they're, not, they're not that great. Look at me, I kick with both legs the same. Bata! What I just did right now, they can't do it. Not with my speed, not with my height. Like, I'm kicking high, guys. I need to kick really high. Bow! Bow! 180. Axe kick. I can do any kind of kick in multiple ways. So these guys are bullshitting when they say that they are the best kickers, okay? They're best friends. They're sucking each other's dicks so that you guys believe that they're the best but this is not true. I think uh, maybe they choose to talk good about each other without actually being on the show with each other at the same time. Because this way maybe uh, to, they can pull this off longer, but they're best friends and they've said it themselves. So they know each other. This is why they talk good about each other, but it doesn't make it true. Their kicks are limited. I wouldn't even call them first degree black belt kicks, neither one of them. Joe Rogan competed, guys, when he was a teenager. He started late. He started at like 15, 16. All right, at that, at that age, I was already a black belt. He quit before he was 20. I've been doing this all my life since I was four. Like, you cannot compare the levels of Joe Rogan versus me. Like, I'll knock out Joe Rogan in any form of fighting. MMA, boxing, kickboxing, the street, it doesn't matter. Like, his, his knowledge of fighting is not as high as most people think it is. Like, my IQ of fighting is way, way, way higher than Joe Rogan's. Okay, and then moving on to Michael J. White, the guy's never fought. If you guys see him spar, what do you guys think that when he went and sparred uh, John Jones? I don't know if you guys know, John Jones said he got his butt whooped. This is before he shared the video. Oh, I got my butt whooped, but they're laughing, you know. Michael J. White is thinking, oh my God, this is great for publicity. 
But then I think it became too much for John Jones and he chose, he chose to post the footage, which I made a video on. The guys are like hugging each other or laughing. They're not really sparring. There is no such thing as Michael J. White getting even close to, uh, to beating up John Jones. This is BS. You guys watch all his sparring. I've done videos on this too. It's super light. He's just basically hugging. They're not really fighting. And the BS that Michael J. White says that he'll get in the ring with anybody is not true. Uh, I don't even think the guys ever really fought because of this, because the things he said himself, he's like a self snitcher, guys. He said in one video, he said that he admires Conor McGregor because he wouldn't know if he would have had what Conor McGregor has. Like getting beat and then coming back and then coming back and then coming back. That tells me that he never really got beat up before. Because if you're taking a real martial arts, like any martial arts that's hard, like for example, he only did point uh, uh, fighting, like karate point fighting, you guys can see the video. He doesn't throw one high kick that connects, it's all middle kicks, and, and, and it's not impressive at all. It's, it's, it's like karate kid tournaments. They score one point and then they stop. That's all he has, he has nothing else. So the idea that he'll get in the ring with anybody is BS, guys. I'm gonna tell you guys another thing. Almost all fighters are afraid to fight, but they do it anyways. Michael J. White is terrified to fight. He only says this, this type of uh, things for publicity. I challenged Michael J. White to a fight publicly on Michael Samurai's YouTube channel, and it wasn't even my idea, and Michael J. White responded to me and he even denied saying that he could beat up uh, uh, Tyson. He said that I, I can go to the States to spar him, like hug, like hug each other. That's not sparring. Like, I, I'm talking about actual fight. Why did I challenge him? It wasn't even meant to be, guys. Like, I made a video with Michael Samurai. I gave him the idea. I'm like, you ask me which martial arts, uh, which movie star is the, 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 the real tough guy, the one that can beat up all the other ones. And I said, Mr. T. But first I uh, threw the question back at Michael Samurai and he said Michael J. White and I started telling him the things I'm telling you guys now that he actually sucks, he's not that good, he can't fight. The idea that he's somehow the best movie star in fighting is, bo is, 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 is BS, right? It's, it's just BS. There's many, many people that, that could beat Michael J. White. Chuck Norris could beat Michael J. White, okay? I'm just saying, there's many people out there that could beat Michael J. White. Um, so the, 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 this idea that he'll get in the ring with anybody it's, it's BS, he won't do it, because he already said himself that he doesn't know if he would have that, the ability to come back after get beaten. I got my ass whooped like three years long when I was getting my black belt and my instruction certificates. I was always getting beat up. Here in Hall of I was always getting beat up, always getting beat up and coming back and coming back. That's how you get good. Like if you haven't gone through that, then that tells me you don't know how to fight. Michael J. White will never fight. His gravestone will read, here lies Michael J. White, he never fought. Okay, so it's... Uh, it's all baloney. And, and, and now we'll get to the bonus, all right? The bonus, which is the chain snapping story kick about Michael J. White, all right? Everyone will say, oh, it's true, it's true, it's true. Is it true, really? If someone could do that, like snap a new chain, not an old one, just snap it. If you could do it then on, the, on a bag like that, you could do it again on another bag just like it. Period. If you can do it on one, you can do it on many. It's like knocking people out, okay? I'll tell you guys a story about the, one of the worst knockouts here in the gym in Holland. There's this, this big guy named Jan uh, in Steinweig at Sport Inn Gym in Steinweig. Ran at the time by uh, Colin Kiss, judo champion. He was the owner, okay? Now this guy, Jan, really tall guy, bully, the biggest one in the class. He was always kicking everybody in the head everywhere. You know, uh, he, 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 he sparred me. And he threw a high kick immediately. I blocked it. I already knew what he was going to do. So when the next time he threw a high kick, I just countered with a wheel kick. I kicked him as hard as I could. I hit him right here in the cheekbone and I knocked, out, I, I knocked him out cold. He had two broken cheekbones. He was bleeding out of his nose, out of his eyes, out of his ears. It was really messed up. I took him out in a stretcher. And I'll dare to say, I can do that again to anybody. Okay, you put somebody's head and I'll spin kick it or you, or you put me like, a, like a, maybe a dummy, like a fake head and I kick it, I know I'll crack it. Okay, I'll crack it any time with that same kick, with that same wheel kick. I've done it that many times, okay? So the idea that he's gonna, that, 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 that he's gonna do a weak ass spinning side kick like the one he does in his video and actually snap a bag is BS. He doesn't have the speed nor the power for this. Also, if you guys watch him spar, he's got no rhythm. Makuchi Uwai spars with no rhythm. You know, he like, he throws punches, he jumps way too high when he bounces. He throws ax kicks that look like this. And then he leans forward, he hugs. Like I can tell by the way he moves that he's got no rhythm. Right? He doesn't bring his hands back to his hands. His legs are not placed solid. He doesn't have a particular stance or movement that I can be like, okay, this guy's fun a lot. This guy, has, this guy has experience. You can see the lack of experience in Michael J. White's movement. And I'll double down with my challenge, okay? I'll challenge Michael J. White 
and Joe Rogan, I'll fight you guys both at the same time in any rules. Kicking, taekwondo, uh, karate comeback, kickboxing, MMA, you name it, no rules, bare knuckles, dude, I'll pff, knock out both of you at the same time. And I'll do a Pepsi Coke challenge, me versus both of you with kicking anytime. You guys throw your best kicks at me, I'll do my best kicks. See who wins. Like, the level, guys, it's like, if, if, you, if you could see the level <coughs> of difference between me and them, they're, they're somewhere here, right by my feet somewhere here, and my level is somewhere above this damn roof. That's the difference between me and them. I'm obsessed with kicking. Like, I like kicking more than eating. I like kicking more than women. It's my number one thing in the world that I like the most, that's most important to me since I was a kid. This is why, like, you'll never beat me at kicking. Uh, for example, when you, I do take one, said one thing about Conor McGregor, which I, I really like. He said that he knew that, that Khabib would beat Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor is interested in, in other things like money, women, partying, cocaine. And he's like, Khabib is just church, pray, train, church, pray, train, church, pray, train. How can you beat that? Well, I don't pray, but my church, my training, my sleep is this. This all day long, this is what I do. I even started to try the lucid dream. I'm trying to the lucid dream thing. Um, I was able to fly in a lucid dream. And this is not the reason why I'm trying to lucid dream. You guys wanna know why I'm trying to lucid dream? Because if you even think about training, you can actually grow your muscles and get better. But if you take it up a level, if you can lucid dream, if I can lucid dream and start kicking and training in my dreams, that's what I'm aiming for. I'm not there yet. But I'm getting there because in my last dream, I was Van Damme for some reason, and I wasn't trying to be Van Damme in my dream. I was trying to be me, and I woke up uh, pissed that I wasn't myself and that I wasn't able to see that it was just a dream. I'm writing out all my dreams. So I'm trying to wake up as myself in my dream and train and throw like a thousand kicks in, uh, like while I'm sleeping in my dream. This is how obsessed I am with kicking, guys. Like I don't get enough done in the day. I want to do more. Like right now I'm sitting here and piss talking to you guys for how long? Show me another person that can do this. Nobody can. What's the trick? It's a simulation. I'm programmed like this. I really am. And uh, I'm also programmed to expose bullshit. Like Michael J. White and Joe Rogan's is BS. You know? Like Joe Rogan conveniently, guys, conveniently uh, uh, builds up who he wants to. For example, um, he'll call some people out on their BS and other people he won't. Like you guys saw how he called that... Uh, Adam ruins everything guy, that, 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 that beta male that's trying to make alpha males a fake thing, how he call them out and just destroy them. You guys seen that, right? Now compare that to like uh, Ed Calderon, a perfect example. Ed Calderon, that Mexican cartel ex-cop guy that claims he's a fight expert. He was an ex-cop, but get this, he was an ex-cop in Mexico before the drug war started. So it's not like he lived through the drug war, all right? When he was a cop, they were not really going after them. <laughs> this is why... His whole concept of what happened in that house is not, is not right. I think he really suffers from, from heavy uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I mean, I don't blame him for it. I think El Calderon just didn't see it right. I, I think he actually believed that he saw it the way he did. And I don't think he's lying when he's ta ta talking to Joe Rogan. But Joe Rogan or that other guy that he has, I forget his name, Jamie, they should have called him out on it, all right? What does he say about the Raider about El Chapo's son? He says that when the cops walk in there, you can see by their face that they, they stumbled in on it. Like, like they were worried. No, they were not worried. They were not local PD like you, buddy. They were feds. They were sent there to get him. You know how you know? Because they're calling his name out from outside. Ovidio, Ovidio, Ovidio. Before they even see Ovidio El Chapo Guzman's son, they already know he's in there because they're calling out his name. Watch the video again, guys. All right? They're calling him out. And it, they're making it seem like they stumbled up in the wrong house. If you guys stumbled up in the wrong house and your local PD, but they were not, they were fed. If that was true, wouldn't they just leave again instead of just staying there? Logical, right? They had cameras and everything. They were sent there for a reason, my man, okay? They were sent there with the mission to get these people. I had students who were fed in Mexico because I actually was there after the drug war started. This guy left way before that, guys. He left before 2006 to the United States, before it got heavy, all right? This is when I started living there, so you can't compare what I've seen and what I've been through there. The people that have lost to what he went through there when he was there. Like, it's, it's, it's not comparable. I lived in Acapulco. was number one in the world. The devil of Tijuana violence when he was a cop doesn't even get close. Okay, so that said, that's number one, all right? They knew he was there. They were coming to get him. And then the second thing he says is that you guys see what he handed to the guy? What he handed to him was a gun. That was not a gun, my bro. 
That was a fucking phone. How do you, does Jamie not see that that's a phone? How does he not call him out on this? And Joe Rogan too. It's like, okay, look, Ed, you know, maybe you've been through a lot of stuff. Maybe uh, you're a little paranoid and you want to think that's a gun, but that's a fucking phone. Why don't you open up your eyes? That's the second thing. Third thing, he's saying that, that they didn't mean to stumble in upon him. Then why does one of them smack El Chapo's son really hard on his back and put him on the ground? Like he's his bitch and shit. Why did he do that? Because they were out to get him. You can see that in the video, the way they treat him, the way they take him out of there. They were out there to get him. They were not stumbled up on that thing. What he handed to him was not a gun, it was a fucking phone. And this is what I don't like about Joe Rogan sometimes. He'll hype some people up and he'll expose some other people conven at whatever is convenient for him he'll do at that moment, you know? But this, uh, this Michael J. White and uh, Joe Rogan BS, guys. I mean, I, there, there, there's no other better way I could put it. Uh, I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think so. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have 20 years experience as a bouncer. Okay, I've lived in four countries. I lived in Spain, Holland, Mexico, United States. Um, I'm a four degree black belt in Taekwondo, in Hapkido. I have competed in karate. I have competed in judo. I've competed in MMA. I have fought in kickboxing. And now uh, for you guys that stay to the end of the video, here you go. If you guys want to see my MMA fight in Mexico, you click up here. If you guys want to see me knocking out a big guy in the, in, in the gym with a wheel kick to the liver, click here. If you guys want to see me knock out uh, a dust kickboxer in the ring, click here. And if you guys want to see me wheel kick someone out cold, click over here. To the next video, guys. Catch you later.